Hello again, everyone. Welcome back. In this technical analysis of the stock market video, I call it, I titled it, Will the All-Time Highs Hold? Well, we'll see. The all-time highs are in. The Dow Industrials uh, peaked out. Well, let me step back a second. The Dow Utilities peaked in February 2020. The Russell 2000 peaked in March of this year. The Dow Transports peaked in early May. I think it was around May 8th, 9th. The Dow Industrials peaked in mid-August, S&P 500 peaked September 2nd, and the NASDAQ Composite and the NASDAQ 100 peaked on September 7th, five days later. We'll see. Here's a picture of the monthly view. We had a lot of damage for the month of uh, September. Now, uh, this little white bar is just the one day of trading that occurred on Friday. So what I'm focused on is this candle here for the month of September. The Dow was down... 1,517 points for the month, about 4% or so. The NASDAQ or the S&P 500 was down 215 points, down around 5%. The NASDAQ composite was down 810 points for a five points, minus 5.6%. So pretty negative, a lot of damage being done. Interesting thing in here when you look at some of this in terms of the trading and, and how it did like on the Dow Industrials, look how we closed well below August, almost closed below uh, July. But how many times before had we done a close below a prior month? Well, there wasn't any until you get back into February and March. Same thing on the S&P 500. No close below, not just, I mean, I know some folks have heard talk about and said, well, it's the first down month since January. Well, yeah, it is. But it's also the first close below a prior month's trading since February and March activity of 2020, the big, the big decline. So now in the move up from 2018 into 2019, there was a couple of times, a couple of months right here. You can see April and uh, what was that, August, where we did close below the prior month. We just didn't get any follow through. So we'll see what kind of follow through we get here for the month of October. A lot of damage was done here in September. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ today, the NASDAQ and the Russell 2000. I'm going to go back here to the NASDAQ composite. Here's the daily view. Uh, let's see, on Friday... I'm looking for my notes here. It was up 118 points on Friday. So at first I thought this type of candle, I thought we had a hammer being put in, but I think if, to truly call this a hammer, you need to be closing almost exactly on the high for the day. And we kind of backed off and kept the body inside the body of the prior day. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what kind of follow through we get. Up 118 points, but again, for the week, a lot of damage being done, down 481 points. So uh, we'll see where we go with this kind of view. Let me talk, let's talk about the uh, Elliott Wave picture here. I'll pull that up. Okay, let me show you the count that I'm currently working. The count that I'm currently working says that we are in the process of trying to complete a wave four pullback and have one more push to the upside. That's a very real possibility. Uh, we may have already done it. I mean, Friday's low may be it. We'll see. Uh, I'll tell you, so here's, when you look at the weekly chart, here's how that looks. But the thing that I'm really watching is over here on the daily chart. Okay, the wave count I've got in is just like this. Minor wave one, two, three, four, and then one more thrust up for five. Now, here's this level. I got it 14, 2, 12. It's actually 14, 2, 11 something. I just rounded it 14, 12. The bottom line is this wave four cannot overlap this wave one. If it does, if it continues to push down, then I'm going to move to this count that says the high is in and we're coming down. And whether it's a wave three, I'm going to just uh, put hide this visibility for now. Uh, cycle, I'm, I'm focused on the, on the uh, primary right now in terms of the count, the completing the waves up from the March 2020 low. And, uh, and so if we do that overlap that I just talked about, if we come down and do the overlapping wave one, 
then I'm going to conclude that the high on September 7th is the end of the five wave move. And right, and then we're flushing out a bear uh, move to the downside and we'll be looking for five waves. So we'll see what we get right now. This is the, the view that we've got tentatively. And we'll see what happens here over the next uh, couple of days and weeks. Uh, let's take a look at uh, the Russell 2000. Okay, here's a weekly view of the Russell uh, 2000 ETF IWM. And the all-time high in here, it was in the month of March uh, earlier this year, and I'm labeling it as the fifth wave. And I believe that we're done uh, with the move. We have peaked out since March. Now, it's been pretty choppy and pretty messy. Ryan reminds me of what I call barbed wire. But uh, I'm still watching for a breakdown. This is just, this is a path forward. I'm not saying that wave three is going to be done at this time and it's going this far. It's just right now I'm waiting for this to break down. We keep looking for this to break down. You know, every time it starts, then it pauses. And, you know, what this reminds me of a lot, uh, if I stretch this out a little bit, uh, let me show you the Dow back in the 2000 uh, high. Okay, here's a weekly view of the Dow Industrials, and here's that peak in January of 2000. And yeah, that was the high, okay? Look how choppy and messy this was as it continued to break down. So yeah, you can have this kind of mess. It doesn't mean that, you know, it's not going to continue to break down. And it's this is what the Russell 2000 is reminding me of right now today. Let me go back to the Russell um, and let me zoom in a little bit. So that's what it looks like. And we're watching to see if we get a breakdown in here. Uh, but that's the picture we've got looking for a third wave. So far, it's not acting like a third wave, but that can change pretty quickly. Let me get rid of this. OK, let's take a look at a couple of our indicators. Okay, here's the McClellan Oscillator. It pulled back on Friday back up into here to like a positive six or nine. I don't have the, let's see, I think I do have the name. Yeah, it's a plus nine. So this is really dead neutral on the market. You know, we were slightly overbought and very slightly oversold. And now we're back and we're kind of neutral. But the summation index has really got my attention. If I could get it to cooperate here. Look how low this is getting, and I'm really watching this very, very closely. This is the lowest level since before it broke zero back here in March of uh, 2020. And, you know, if, when it breaks zero, that's a sign of intense selling kicking in. And you can see we haven't broken zero since that point. And prior to that, the, the, the previous time before that was the fall of 2018 in October. And you can see what happened here. This was October of 2018. And we got below zero and the intense selling in November and then December. OK, so right now we're getting close. We're just right down above that zero line. We get any kind of strong uh, negative breath this coming week, and it could cause it to break on through. Uh, the next thing I want to take a look at is the high yield bond fund. And I want to go back to the daily view and look at the moving average view. Here's what I'm looking at. And I'll look at the weekly in a second. We were down on Friday, down eight cents. But look at what happened this week. It's definitely in risk off mode with the high yield bond fund. What you look at and what you think of when you look at this is saying, OK, what is it telling me in terms of animal spirits, risk on, risk off? When it's rising and people are looking for high yields uh, and, and getting into this, then it's risk on. When it's going in the opposite direction, it's risk off. Right now, it's telling you risk off. And that's in sync with what this market did. This has been like a range for the last three months. And now we're approaching again down to the bottom of the range. We're right at a trend line from the month of May. So watching to see, do we get that breakdown? And it's interesting when you look at the weekly chart here for HYG, this thing closed. Let me zoom in. 
it closed slightly below the uh, range here for the month of uh, August. Now, I, okay, this is weekly. Yeah, this is for the uh, week of August 22nd, but it's the last five weeks. So the entire trading range of the last five weeks is where we close below with the uh, with the close on Friday. So not a very positive picture right now in terms of what's going on, watching to see if this thing is going to break down this coming week. All right. Um, let's see. I want to take a look at, I'm going to look at commodities today. Let me pull up oil and I'm going to go to the weekly view of USL and I'm going to this wave count right here. Here's what I've got. I think we've got one more push that's underway. This fifth wave is underway here on USL. Uh, oil has been acting very, very bullish. Uh, you know, the Bloomberg uh, Commodity Index here on a weekly view, I think we're in a fifth wave. It's been, uh, it was up 195 this last week. So uh, we held this uh, area that had been resistance, became support. And now I think we're, we've got uh, one more push that's underway here. So uh, that's the way that looks. And here's the moving average view of that. Let's take a look at gold. Now, GLD, I am hanging with the, with the bullish scenario still. I am hanging with that. It was up $1.29 for this last week. It needs to get going, though. It needs to keep pushing. We break this trend line. And I think this third wave is going to be underway. And I'm looking for the third wave of a third intermediate push to the upside here. So, you know, there's a lot of bearish sentiment on gold, silver, uh, and, and other commodities. And uh, right now I'm looking for this thing to keep. I'm still trying to give the bulls the benefit of the doubt. So we're hanging with this scenario. Same thing on silver. Now, this is this came down here. I think we have a little like, ending diagonal pattern here for this wave C. And, uh, you know, we had a little, you know, what I call a, um, a um, throw over, <laughs> throw over to the downside here for a fifth wave is the term I was looking for that just was uh, eluding my mind. So I think this fifth wave had a little throw over to the outside of the triangle pattern in here. And, uh, you know, you notice how we're getting bullish divergence here on the RSI. I think there's a pretty good chance that the bottom is in. I want to see follow through to the upside here on silver. All right. That's the picture for this weekend. If you felt like the video was helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber to the channel, hit that little subscriber button. If you'd like more of this information on a regular basis, head on over to joehenches.net. Check out the website. Check out the membership. Everyone have a great week. We'll talk to you on the next video.